Hi class and welcome to our final lesson on problem solving and programming. I am your presenter, Ms. Anderson. Now as usual, let's recap what we learned in the previous session. We looked at the top-down problem solving method. We also were able to distinguish between what was a variable and what is a constant. And lastly, we were able to look at the different data types, looking at what was an integer, what was real string, character, and boolean. Now, the objectives of today's lesson will be to describe what is typecasting, explain what are algorithms, and we want to create a flowchart. Now, let's review a bit of data types. Do you recall that an integer is a whole number? We also have real or float, which are numbers that include decimal points. We also looked at what was a string, which is a sequence of characters, for example, the word John. We were able to look at what was a character, and we looked at what was a Boolean, which can only have two possible answers, either true or false, or yes or no. Now, using that information, we can now take a look at what is typecasting. Now, typecasting is the process of converting the value of one data type, either an integer, a string, a float, etc., into another data type. Now, we refer to this as an explicit type conversion, where the user converts the data type of an object, required, of an object to a required data type. We use what are called predefined functions, such as int to represent integers, float, of course, to represent a float, and str to represent a string. And these allow us to perform these type of conversions. This type of conversion is also called typecasting because the user will cast, which means to change the data type of the object. For example, p equals float, and in brackets, we, pl we place p. Now, usually when we see the word pay, remember pay is considered to be a string because it is a string of characters. However, we want pay to now be a float. So what we do is that we place the word float followed by brackets and the word pay, telling the program that pay is now considered to be a float. So again, pay was a string. However, it is now a float by associating the function in front of it. Next, we want to take a look at what are algorithms. An algorithm is a set of instruction that if you follow them in sequence will lead to a solution for the problem. Now remember we looked at that term or these set of terms before. When we're looking at a sequence of instructions, we refer back to problem solving. And this entire series is about problem solving. Now, an algorithm is a complete sequence of instructions to solve a problem. Now, algorithms have some characteristics. For example, they have a set number of steps. They are always precise and unambiguous. That means they are very clear. They have instruction that pass flow of control from one process to the next, and eventually they terminate, which means they end. Your problem is solved. Now, there are two ways of representing algorithms. You can either use a flowchart or use what is called a pseudocode. If you're using a flowchart, you're using a pictorial representation, whereas pseudocode is text and numbers. Flowcharts, for example, will have standard symbols. That means that these symbols are universal whenever you're creating a flowchart for an algorithm. Pseudocodes will use text, numbers, and special symbols to document the algorithm. Now, pseudocodes is similar to real programming language, but it does not use exactly the same terminology. For this lesson, we'll only be looking at flowchart creation. As before mentioned, there are standard symbols we have when creating a flowchart for an algorithm. We have the terminal and the symbol uses something like an oval. Now these terminators show the start and start and stop points of a process. You can only have 
two terminators for each flowchart. The reason why you can only have two terminators is because you'll have one at the beginning and one at the end. Hence, we label the first terminator beginning or begin and the second one end. Another symbol that we use is the input-output symbol. The data symbol is used to indicate, like it says, what is inputted to or output from a process. The symbol must be labeled with either input or output. Now the process symbol is that of a square and this program instruction or instructions that transforms input or inputs into output or outputs are recorded here. So we're looking at what process actually takes place. Each symbol must be labeled with an operation that includes the assign operator. That means you must indicate that the operator exists using the arrow. A decision indicates a question or a branch if the process in the process flow. For example, x is greater than zero. No need to write the words if or then in the symbol. You're going to label one branch with yes and the other with no. Again, this is only required if there's a decision to be made. And lastly, you're going to indicate the flow lines, which are the flow line connectors, which show the direction that the process flows. Now, let's see if we can put this all together. We want to create a flowchart to input two numbers, then add them and output the result. If we think about our IPO chart, what would be the input? If you said the two numbers, that's correct. Now what is the processing? We want to add them together. And what is the output? Your, if your output would be the sum when you add the two numbers together, which would be your result. Now converting this into a flowchart, we of course must start with the terminator begin, and then we move down to the input, and then the input is labeled with number one and number two. That's what we want to place into our problem. Next, we want to find out the sum so we place sum and notice the arrow is pointing to what we want done. We want to know the sum. How do we find out the sum? By adding number one to number two. Next, we get the output and the output would be sum. And again, we use another terminator to show that we have, en we have ended our algorithm. Let's try another one. Develop an algorithm to prompt for and accept values for the length and width of a football field. The algorithm should show or compute the area and output the result with a suitable label. Now let's look at the solution to this problem. It says that we want to develop an algorithm to prompt for and accept values for length. So notice we begin However, we move to an output. Why are we getting an output? Notice this will be displayed on the screen for the user to see. The user will be prompted to please enter length and width of the football field. Now, once that happens, the user will then input the length and width, and then the calculation or process occurs. The area is calculated with length multiplied by width. Now the output that we get would be the area of the field. And we said that we want to show a suitable label. Now the label, because it is a string, must be shown in quotes. So we're going to place the area is, and then where the space applies, we're going to have the calculated result. And of course, we end with another terminator. Now, I want to see if you guys can try this one on your own. I want, after reading the problem, you pause the video before going on to the results. It says we want to develop an algorithm that will read and find the average of three pricers in prices sorry, entered at the keyboard. So pause the video, 
take out a pen and paper, try to solve it, and then move on. Let's look at the solution. Now the solution says that we, of course, begin with the terminator. And what is our input? We want to input three prices. So we'll input price one, price two, and price three. Next, we want to find the average so that the processing. How is the average calculated? Price one is added to price two, which is added to price three. And then the total is divided by three. This then gives us the output, which is the average. And of course, we have a string, and that string is in quotes. The average is, and so we will see our results. And again, we end at this point. So what did we learn today? We learned to describe what was typecasting. I remember that's changing from one data type to another. We explained what are algorithms and that they can be represented either by a flowchart or a pseudocode. And we looked at how to create a flowchart. Now, thank you for watching this video. I hope that you have learned something new. And remember, on Thursday, we will be expecting a review exercise.